This video is an introduction to topographic maps. Maps are important research tools that provide a method for reducing large amounts of information to a manageable size. There are many types of maps that simplify and present the variety of different features and patterns found on the Earth as they would appear from an overhead or aerial view. And these maps are made in lots of different ways. Since the Earth is nearly spherical, while maps are flat, it's not completely spherical, it's nearly spherical. It's a little bit egg-shaped. It's fatter in this direction than it is from pole to pole. And that's because as it spins, it bulges out around the equator. Um, plus, it's kind of egg-shaped because with less continental material in the lower um, southern hemisphere, the southern hemisphere bulges a little bit more than the northern hemisphere does. But at any rate, it's nearly spherical, um, but maps are flat, and so the best representation of the Earth is a globe. However, globes are not really on the right scale to be useful if you're looking for, say, directions to your friend's house. For centuries, map makers called cartographers have realized that it's important to transfer a representation of the Earth's curved surface to a map's plane surface and maintain both the shapes and the area of the Earth's features. And this is a very tough thing to do because you can either preserve the shapes or preserve the areas, but you can't actually preserve both of them. So that we have this concept of map projections um, projection is just a way to get a, a mathematical model that takes us from the round earth, or nearly round earth, to a flat map. Okay, so I'll say that again, a pr projection is just a mathematical model to get from a round earth to a flat map. And there are three main types of projections um, that are based on these shapes shown. Um, you can wrap a cylinder around the Earth, touching at the equator, and open it up. And I think you can picture if you open this up, you'd end up with a square map. So a cylinder shape creates something called a Mercator projection. You could put a cone over the Earth, so it would be touching at more of a mid-latitude. And that creates something called a conic projection, right? Cone-like projection, conic. Or you can take a plane, a set flat surface that just touches at one point, and that is called a planar or azimuthal projection. So there's actually more than 200 different map projections. Uh, there's lots of ways to get from a round earth to a flat map, um, but cartographers divide those, all those different projections into two major types. There is what's called a conformal projection, and conformal um, projections keep the shape accurate. So shapes are accurate, um, especially where the projection is um, actually sort of touching the surface of the globe. So this is a, a polar projection. It's based on a plane that was sitting right on the North Pole, and the shapes of the things here are very accurate. Now the areas are not. Look how big Africa looks. Right? Look how big um, you know, Saudi Arabia looks. It's not, Saudi Arabia isn't the size of the entire Arctic Ocean, but the map distorts the areas around the outside edge in order to keep the shapes around the poles very, very accurate. That's an example of a conformal projection. The other type of projection is called an equal area projection, and that is a projection that distorts shapes but makes areas accurate. And that might be a kind of um, map that you would want if you were looking at, say, something like population density. You would want area to be accurate. You wouldn't really care about shapes. You'd want to know how many people are in this space or if you were looking at the distribution of different types of vegetation around the globe, you'd probably want equal area projection because 
it, it would show you the areas of various vegetation types. Um, an example of this, or kind of an opposite example of this, you've probably learned before that on square maps, Mercator projections, Greenland looks way bigger than it should be. It, in, in some Mercator projections, the Greenland looks like it's, it's bigger than South America. It is not. Here's Greenland. It's very tiny. And so in these types of maps, like this mollyweed, um, they're preserving areas and at the sacrifice of shapes. And some maps are a combination of conformal and equal area. They don't do either thing perfectly, but they also uh, have less distortion in both fields, or, or you know, the less they minimize distortion in every area. So these are called polyconic projections. Is one example of these. Um, so it's kind of based on this latitude line, but then also that latitude line. It's a, a common way to try to minimize the distortions. To show landforms and locations with great accuracy, topographic maps that have been published by the U.S. Geological Survey use polyconic projections as the base. That's the minimum amount of distortion that we can get. So whenever you're looking at models of the Earth, you should remember a globe is the most accurate because it's most similarly shaped like the planet. But it's often not at the right scale, so you need to use maps. And when a map is necessary, you should select a map projection that best suits your needs. Um, if you're most concerned about shapes, then you should get a conformal projection. If you're most concerned about areas, you should get a um, equal area projection. All right, so a little sidetrack there on the FYI. Um, the point we're making is there's a lot of different types of maps. So maps can be as simple as showing your way uh, from your house to the post office. Um, everyone's probably seen a road map that illustrates the highways and the roads that connect cities. Maps sometimes show patterns like rainfall or climate or agricultural activity. One special kind of map, called a topographic map, illustrates with great accuracy the vast amount of physical and cultural features that occur on the Earth's surface. These topographic maps are really the workhorse of geoscientists. They are a detailed, scaled model. Um, it's an overhead representation of the Earth's surface. A, a topographic map is a very, very valuable, valuable tool for geologic and land use studies, um, land use planning, constructing everything from buildings to bridges to highways. Earth scientists use topographic maps a lot because they include things like very precise locations. So this is showing the location of Highland Park School. They show elevations, that is height above sea level. These brown lines on the map, although they look a little confusing and overwhelming, are showing the elevation contours. And then there are also specific points where elevations are given. They show types of landforms. Although this might just look like a bunch of scribbly lines to you, a trained earth scientist knows that this is a hill. Here's another hill. Here's another hill. This is a valley. Here's another valley. There's a trail. This part of the trail would be incredibly steep. This part of the trail would be much less steep. So <clears throat> landforms show up on topographic maps, if you know how to read them. Other kinds of physical information also show up, like vegetation. This is a woodland or a forest. Uh, rivers and lakes are usually shown in blue. Uh, trails and roads are usually shown in black or red. Topographic maps have been produced by the United States Geological Survey since the late 1800s. It's kind of a long and interesting history. The United States Geological History was established uh, in uh, 1879 by an act of Congress to provide a federal agency to conduct systematic and scientific classification of the public lands and examination of the geological structure, mineral resources, 
and products of the national domain. The USGS almost immediately began topographic surveys to prepare reliable maps of the nation and, in 1888, began irrigation surveys to measure the flow of the nation's streams. These basic tasks were expanded in 1962 when Congress authorized the USGS to examine the ocean floor and certain other areas outside of the United States and its territories. The USGS has really become a major um, source of geological information for scientists in the United States and around the world. They're even charged with important tasks like uh, preparing for and understanding uh, natural disasters and also even looking at how we can prevent them. The establishment in 1983 of the United States Exclusive Economic Zone, or EEZ, which stretches from 200 nautical miles seaward from the nation's coastline, increased significantly the area within which the mineral and energy resources must be assessed. The current mission of the USGS is to provide geologic, topographic, and hydrologic information that contributes to the wise management of the nation's natural resources and that promotes the health, safety, and well-being of the people. The information consists of maps, databases, and descriptions and analyses of the water, energy, mineral resources, land surfaces, underlying geologic structure, and the dynamic processes of the earth. The USGS and the Mapping of America Initially charged by Congress with the classification of public lands, the USGS began topographic and geologic mapping in 1879. Most of the early USGS mapping activities took place in the vast, largely uninhabited western United States. Extreme challenges awaited these mapping pioneers. Travel was arduous and costly. Many locations could be reached only by mule pack train. Furthermore, surveying and mapping instruments were crude by today's standards. Most maps were made using a classic mapping technique called plane table surveying. Plane table surveying took great skill and depending on the mapping site, equal daring. Carrying a plane table, essentially a portable drawing board on top of a tripod with a sighting device, the topographer would climb to the area's best vantage point, which is usually the highest point, and carefully plot on the map those features that could be seen and measured in the field. Plane table surveying remained a dominant USGS mapping technique until the 1940s when it gave way to the airplane and the age of photogrammetry, the science based on applying mathematical and geometrical principles to obtain reliable math me map measurements from aerial photographs. In the late 1830s, the basic map making procedure of the plane table surveying began being replaced by the use of aerial photographs along with field techniques for preparing topographic maps. Photographs were first taken from an airplane. When taken sequentially and in an overlapping manner, photographs can be viewed stereoscopically and that gives the impression of depth with an instrument called a stereoscope. Basically the reason we three see in 3D is because we have two eyes and so having an airplane take two separate pictures overlapping is, um, it makes us able to produce a three-dimensional image. One type of instrument used by the USGS through the 1950s for preparing topographic maps from aerial photographs was the double projection plotter. The double projection plotter images uh, form overlapping aerial photographs stereoscopically on a table, so map features can be traced and reproduced on a map sheet. Today, using the same principles, model, modern instruments applying advanced optical, mechanical, and electronic techniques have replaced the double projection plotter for preparing topographic maps. And really, much of the work today is um, done with remote sensing, um, which is detecting things from space, uh, from uh, using GPS technologies or global positioning systems, also, in, also taking advantage of satellites in space to very accurately map the surface of the Earth.